Good morning and welcome as we gather to worship again this day in person, but also online and on the radio at KOFI Radio. We're, one, we're blessed to be able to, uh, to gather again together. Uh, we're a little spaced out and that, that's an okay thing. Uh, thank you for all of the ways that you're helping us all to stay healthy and in good spirits. We'll be celebrating Holy Communion today, and so for those of you at home, we're asking that uh, if you have some bread or wine or grape juice uh, available at your home, please gather that together and have that ready a little bit later in our worship service. For those of you who are here in person, I'll have uh, some instructions for you in just a moment for that. There's a couple of announcements in your bulletin I'd like you to take a look at. Uh, the first comes to us from Flathead Lutheran Bible Camp. They're looking for some folks who would be willing to help with laundry over the summer. Their summer staff is going to be restricted in terms of the um, extent to which they're able to be out in the community over the weekends, and so um, we, they would like to be able to, uh, to get some of their laundry done. Uh, they're wondering if we might have some folks that would be willing from time to time to pick up a, uh, a load of laundry, bring it to your home, run it through the washer, and then take it back to them. If that's something that you can do, uh, please uh, take a look at that request in the bulletin and give them a call for details. The other is actually not in your bulletin, but uh, I've been asked to let you know that uh, Dorcas Ruth Circle will meet this week on Tuesday the 9th here at the church, and I believe that's Margie Dornfield that, uh, that uh, you contact for information on that. We're trying out a new setting of the liturgy today, which is a lot of fun for us here. Uh, this is actually a setting of the liturgy that's written by our own Marshall Jones. It's a wonderfully uh, vibrant and joyful setting, and I think you're going to like it a lot. Uh, we've posted some tutorials on uh, our Facebook site and on our website. If you've had a chance to look at those, great. If not, um, feel free today to sing along, uh, but also if you'd rather just go ahead and listen today. And that's fine too. You'll you'll catch up on the tunes as as they uh, as they roll over you these next few weeks, and we're we're glad to be able to uh, include that in our worship today. So for communion, for those of you who are here in person, uh, you notice that I have two tables set up in front of us. Uh, what we're going to do is we have bread in the little white cups that are on the tables, and of course wine or grape juice in the cups, uh, the little plastic cups. At the appropriate time, come forward with your family group or um, alone if you're if you're here by yourself. Uh, come up to either one of the tables, take a cup with the uh, wafer in it. Uh, take the wafer, eat it, uh, then take a cup with the wine, drink that, and then return to your seats. Uh, we'll have you come up the side aisles and uh, return to your seats by the center aisle. Although we'll start with this side, so we're not going to come up together. We'll start with this side. I don't see anybody sitting in the side room yet. If there is, by the time we get there, I'll have that person or those people come up. And then this section on my left, uh, your right, and, uh, and then this section over here. Uh, leave uh, a little bit of room in between uh, yourself and uh, the people in front of you, and I think we'll go along just fine. The ushers are not going to be uh, ushering us up, so go ahead and just uh, uh, take advantage of the time uh, after the person in front of you has gone. Um, I think that's all the information on that. Oh, we do have, as you notice, uh, wine, uh, wine on the outsides that's, of course, uh, dark red in color, and the grape juice, which is yellow in color, and the gluten-free wafers are toward the center of the tables. There's also a little uh, trash can up here. When you're done with your, your cups, just throw them in the trash can before you return back to your seats. If you'd like to receive in your seats where you are, uh, please uh, give me the high sign, and uh, I'll be happy to, to bring to you the uh, the communion as we as we gather with that again welcome so good to be here together with you let us begin with the words of confession and forgiveness please stand <laughs> blessed be the holy trinity one god whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation Amen. trusting in the mercy of god let us confess our sin Reconciling God, 
We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you have provided enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together number, well, in your bulletin, Holy, Holy, Holy. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in the faith, defend us from all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. For the first reading today, I'd like to uh, ask you to help me out a little bit. You see that some of the lines in the reading are bolded. When we come to those lines, can we read all of those lines together? The first reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the, day, the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees, and every kind on earth that bears fruit with seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every seed of every kind, and the trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let there be signs for the seasons and for days and years. And let lights in the dome of the sky to give light on the earth, and it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every wiggle, winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree that has seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath in it, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. 
God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the works that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. The second reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. 
Please be seated. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Jesus and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Every aspect of our world seems to have its own lingo. Like the banking world, there's OAC for on approved credit and FDIC for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. In baseball, there's RBI, or runs batted in, and ERA for earned run average, not to mention phrases like pinch hitter and check swing and flashing the leather. Politics has constituencies and populism and anti-disestablishmentarianism, if you can say that one. Medical stuff is the worst. You have EKGs and COPDs, and don't even make me pronounce the names of most of the medications that I have in my house. But aside from the lingo, there's a culture around many things in our world, isn't there? Culture it has to do with the way people act and, and think and express themselves. Doctors wear white lab coats. Judges wear black robes. It's okay for baseball players to chew and spit, but don't do that in church. And football players can smack each other on the behind, but only on the field, not at the bar. Congress still uses phrases like, the gentleman from California has the floor. And a college diploma might read something like, in witness whereof, by authority duly committed to us, we have hereunder placed our names and the university seal. Church, of course, is no different. In fact, it's probably worse, and Lutherans to a particularly excessive degree. Our alphabet, our alphabet soup is thick. ELCA, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. LWR, Lutheran World Relief. LCMS, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. LCMC, Lutheran Churches in Mission for Christ. ELCJHL, Evangelical Lutheran Church of Jordan and the Holy Land. FELSISA, Free Evangelical Lutheran Synod in South Africa. And LDS, the Mormon Church? Well, yes, but also Lutheran Development Services. We have words like synod and bishop and narthex and acolyte and paschal candle, not to be confused with the Christ candle. We teach justification and ecumenicalism, catechism and ecclesiastical history. And we use hymnals, which contain not only hymns, but also creeds and affirmation and rites and psalms and liturgies. It's for this reason alone that I try not to tell people on an airplane what I do for a living. To explain it to them takes longer than the flight usually. But the words we use and the, and the colors and the symbols and the patterns of our lives hold our life together, and they hold great meaning for us. The cross isn't just a T made out of wood. We don't pick the colors that we use to adorn our space because they look good or because they follow the trending palette of the latest fashion designs. The songs we sing at worship don't reflect only our favorite playlist because they aren't meant to speak to us as our favorites, but rather to challenge us to hear the nuance of the gospel message. I think it was my grandmother who gave me a book when I was a child. It was called Come and See the Symbols of My Church. I remember being fascinated by it because I could go to church and, and search for the various words and, and letters and symbols in my own church that were represented in my book. Or maybe I just appreciated having something else to do during the sermon. But I also began to realize that it wasn't just my church. 
but many churches that held up these same icons and words and songs and, and ultimately the same message about Jesus that, that somehow all of this brought us together and reminded us that we are one, one family of believers, one people of God. As we read the familiar story of creation today, the first reading, I, I kind of forced you to pay attention, didn't I? To follow along and to add your voice to the story several times during the rhythm of it. Surely you recognized the pattern almost before we began. Scholars of the Bible tell us that, that this story of the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth was actually intended to be, pre to be presented much like the way we did today. It's likely that what we call the story of creation was actually more of a, more of a litany of worship. Something like the way we often read the Psalms back and forth as a call and response action of leader and congregation. The ulterior motive of this kind of presentation, of course, is that, is that you begin to learn the story by heart. Even today, as you go about your business of whatever you're going to be doing this afternoon and this evening, I bet that that phrase will pop into your head. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And there was evening, and there was eve morning the second day. When Jesus tells his disciples to go into all the world, baptizing and teaching and sharing with all peoples everything that he has commanded, he also tells them that they will not be alone. Jesus will, himself will be with them. And they will be with one another, whether in body or spirit or prayer, or as we find out even in today's world, over the airwaves and through our computers. We are given to connect to one another. And there's comfort in the words of Jesus and a promise that we still collect, connect to today. Our lingo, our colors, our symbols, our words, our worship, our liturgy, our story, it's not just random. It's not just whatever the marketing department came up with last week. It's part of who we are. Part of what connects us to each other, to Jesus, and to God's promise. Because God still is about this business of creation. Each day is a new day. Each life, each breath that we breathe is new life within us. Each day, new people come into our lives. There's a new corner of the world to explore. Sometimes things happen that we don't expect. Sometimes those things cause pain and grief. But creation can also surprise us with new and wonderful opportunities. There's birth and growth and milestones that are reached every day. And at the end of each day, the song turns to a familiar refrain as the sun sinks low in the sky and the shadows lengthen. The evening falls and we begin to look once again for the morning. Our song sings altered just slightly. It is evening, but it will also be morning this day, tomorrow, and the length of our days. And Jesus adds a descant of sorts to our song. Remember, I will be with you always. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Lord of creation, you give us each day as a gift. Teach us to see your beauty in the light and darkness, air, land, and sea, plants, and animals, and in every person made in your image. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. As the world groans under the pressure of pandemic, economic uncertainty, war, poverty, famine, devastating weather, and more, guide us to be your hands of service, your words of hope, and your feet of justice. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We lift up those in our community who lead as elected and appointed officials. Bless their work as they seek to provide us with community space where all are welcomed, honored, and protected. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. For those in our hearts, minds, who grieve or are in pain, for the countless in our world who suffer, and for those especially dear to us who yearn for your hand of peace, especially Louise, Bill, Terry, Shane, Roland, Joy, Janet, Bob and Sue, Beverly, Thea, Linda, Ada and Tom, Doug and Heidi, Kim and Bev. Hear us, O God, your mercy, your mercy is great. God of Sabbath rest, Give us in our daily, weekly, and yearly routines of life the opportunity to rest and reflect on your grace. And when our days are over, help us with all the saints into our eternal rest in your everlasting love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For our offering time today, again, please know that uh, if you're here in person, the offering plates are available in the commons for you to place your offering, or you may continue to mail those into the office or give online at our giving portal on our website. Thank you once again for your generosity, especially during this time as we seek to reach out to our community with love, ministry, caring, and hope. God bless you.
goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us with these gifts that we may proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins do this for the remembrance of me let us pray together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, as you are ready, uh, beginning with this side, starting in the front, please come receive both the bread that is here, the bread of Christ, the body of Christ that is given for each of us. And as you continue to come up and receive the cup, know that this is the blood of Christ given and shed for us. As you are at home, please gather around the bread and the wine that you have and share that together, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and receive the gifts.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. table. In this meal, we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share our, your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go, just a reminder that our welcome hosts will uh, usher you out of the uh, sanctuary, so uh, please wait for them to come to your row and uh, indicate that it's your turn to go. Maintain uh, as, as much as you can the space between one another until at least we get outside. Outside is probably the best way to, to stay and, and uh, speak with one another to share a greeting if you would like to do that. Once again, may you be blessed as we go this day. Let us sing together. Let us ever walk with Jesus.
in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.